On the 26th of March, 1942, a small force of sailors and commandos left Falmouth for Operation Chariot, perhaps the most famous commando raid of the entire war. Saint-Nazaire, on the west coast of France, had the Normandy dry dock, the only French dry dock west of the English Channel, large enough to hold and service the German battleship Tirpitz. HMS Campbelltown, formerly USS Buchanan, provided to the Royal Navy as part of the 1940 Destroyers for Bases Agreement, had had her compartments stripped, much of her armament removed, and 9,000 pounds of explosives packed into her bow. The plan was to get her into the estuary, over the sandbanks, hence the removal of so much to reduce her draft, then to ram her into the gates of the Normandy dry dock. The explosives, set to a timer, would go off some hours later. Commanding Campbelltown was Lieutenant Commander Stephen Beatty, nicknamed Sam, and one day shy of his 34th birthday. He was a 16-year veteran of the Royal Navy who cut his teeth in battleships before getting command of his first destroyer in the summer of 1940. Just after midnight on the 28th of March, over a day and a half after leaving Falmouth, Campbelltown and her escorts entered the Loire estuary, Campbelltown scraping the riverbed not once but twice on the way in. An hour after that, Campbelltown found herself illuminated by German shore lights. Her attempts to pass herself off as a German ship were not successful, and she quickly found herself fired upon, with more than a mile left to go until reaching the dry dock. On the bridge, two helmsmen were hit and replaced in quick succession, while the glare of the shore-based searchlights made it difficult to see the dry dock. Nevertheless, Campbelltown rammed herself at speed into the dock's gates, driving herself more than 30 feet into them. The commandos aboard Campbelltown proceeded ashore. I'll talk about them in a little more detail later. But most of them, and most of the destroyer's crew, were captured. Several hours later, a Kriegsmarine officer interrogating Lieutenant Commander Beatty said to him that it wouldn't take long to repair the damage caused by the destroyer ramming the dock gates. Almost at the instant he said that, the explosives in her bow detonated. Lieutenant Commander Beatty just smiled at his captor and said, We're not quite as foolish as you think. The raid had succeeded. The Normandy dry dock was left a complete wreck and not repaired until after the war. But at a heavy cost, 169 sailors and commandos had been killed and 215 more had been captured, about 60% of the total force. No fewer than five VCs were bestowed on the San Jose Raiders, by far the most for an operation of this size. The award to Lieutenant Commander Beatty was made not only in recognition of his own work, but that of all the crewmen of Campbelltown, most of whom had been captured or killed. Lieutenant Commander Beatty himself remained in captivity until war's end, remaining in the Navy until 1960 and working in an advisory capacity in Africa for nine years more. He finally died in 1975 in Cornwall, appropriately enough, not too far from where he and his men set off in 1942. While Lieutenant Commander Beatty, Captain Campbelltown, 34-year-old Commander Robert Ryder, known as Red because of his initials, was the overall commander of the San Jose Raid. In the small motor gunboat 314, he accompanied Campbelltown into the Loire, and once she'd been rammed into the dock gates, he remained in the harbor, organizing the evacuation of men from ashore and keeping up what fire his and other gunboats could muster for over an hour. Finally, his own boat full of wounded and dead men, he took what remained of his force back out of saint Nazaire and headed for home. Somehow the little gunboat survived all this action and made it back to Britain. One sailor who almost survived the raid, was 29-year-old Abel Seaman William Savage, nicknamed Henry VIII by his shipmates because of his big red beard. As gun layer of the forward pom-pom aboard motor gunboat 314, he was in a very exposed and vulnerable position for virtually the entire action. There was no gun shield where he was, but kept up as heavy a rate of fire as he could, silencing German shore emplacements and even a minesweeper at close range. Once they'd reached the open sea again, the fire from shore did not stop, when motor gunboat 314 was about four miles from shore, a final German salvo killed both Abel Seaman Savage and Abel Seaman Smith, as number two on the forward gun. Like the award to Lieutenant Commander Beatty, the VC to Abel Seaman Savage was made to recognize not just his own actions, but those of all the gunners in the motor gunboats, motor torpedo boats, and motor launches during the raid who had to face heavy German fire at close range without protection for the whole of the action in the harbor. As for Commander Ryder, he did make it home. He took part in the much larger Dieppe raid four months later and had graduated to staff positions by war's end. He retired from the Navy in 1950 after 25 years of service, serving the House of Commons as MP for Merton and Morden in South London, sitting on the conservative benches for five years. He died in 1986 at sea in a yacht with two other retired sailors. 
last of the five VCs of the Sensei raid.